welcome students in our last lecture we have seen what do we mean by stiffness and we have also seen there are two types of stiffness is possible linear stiffness and angular stiffness depending upon whether the deflection caused is linear deflection or angular deflection in today's lecture we will see how to find out the stiffness coefficients what do you mean by stiffness coefficients and how to find out these stiffness coefficients today's lecture is extremely important if you remember these techniques then analysis of any structure using stiffness method is a cake walk for any student otherwise it is very difficult so the concept understanding the concept is very important as far as today's lecture is concerned now understand the concept of stiffness analysis let us start with stiffness analysis now let us say there is any structure which is indeterminate in nature a continuous beam let us take an example of a continuous beam which is indeterminate in nature and we want to analyze let us say it is loaded with some loads like this and we want to analyze the structure okay we know the loading values we know the lengths l1 l2 l3 we know the moment of inertia of these beams i1 i2 i3 let us call these a b c and d we know everything and let us say we want to analyze this using stiffness method of analysis now what happens all of us know i have already shared the fixed end moment formula so first thing we do is we fix the ends we fix the ends let us say i am fixing all the ends including d c b and a i have fixed all the ends a b c d i have applied the loads given loads on them on the spans a b b c and c d and then third thing i got i will determine the fixed end moments let us say this is m f a b fixed end moment from end a to b m f b a fixed end moment from end b to a similarly i can find out fixed end moment from m f b c fixed end moment m f c b fixed end moment m f c d and fixed end moment m f d c now all of us know that i am interested to find out what is the final end moment at a what is the final moment at b i am interested to find out what is this moment a b that is what i call as analysis i am interested to find out this m b a and m b c i am interested to find out what is this m c b and what is this end moment m c d and i am interested to find out what is this m d c at present we can predict that m d c will be equal to 0 right that will be one of the checks after our stiffness method so i am interested to find out all these end moments so for first step in that finding out by stiffness method i have fixed i have fixed all the ends and then i have found out the fixed end moments now answer my simple question can i say that end moment is equal to fixed end moment can i say end moment is equal to fixed end moment for a okay end a is fixed in the original structure as well as in the fixed structure this is called as kinematically determinate structure right what is the kinematic indeterminacy of a fixed structure this is kinematically determinate structure all of us know last lecture we have seen how to find out kinematic indeterminacy so we can judge the kinematic indeterminacy of this structure is zero right it is fixed at every end so kinematic indeterminacy of this structure is zero and that is why i have obtained a kinematically determinate structure that is kinematic indeterminacy is equal to zero this means it is kinematically determinate structure i am writing kinematic indeterminacy indeterminacy of this structure is equal to zero so it is kinematically determinate structure i have obtained the fixed end moments a b c d for end a and end b it is similar but what about end b end b is hinge over here 
रोटेशन इज पॉसिबल वेर एज एंड बी इन माई काइनेमेटिकली डिटर्मिनेट स्ट्रक्चर इज फिक्सड सो दीज एंड आर नॉट मैचिंग एंड कंडीशन आर नॉट मैचिंग Similarly, end C in my original structure is hinged, and end C at my kinematically determinate structure is fixed. Same is the case with end D. End D in my original structure is hinged, whereas end D in my kinematic determinate structure is fixed, and that is why these end conditions do not match with the kinematically determinate structure, and that is why I cannot say that these fixed end moments M F A B, M F B A, M F B C, M F C B matches with the end moments. I am interested to finding find out these end moments, and that is why I cannot say this structure is equivalent to the first structure, or this structure will give me the exactly same results of analysis as i want uh, as i want in the first structure so these end moments these two structures are not similar structures so what is the difference what exactly where exactly lies the difference just now we have seen in the first structure end a is fixed and in kinematically determinate structure end a is fixed no difference but in the second structure what is possible possible is we have seen the degree of kinematic indeterminacy in the second structure at b is 1 that is theta b is possible theta b is possible at b we have seen degree of kinematic indeterminacy in details so theta b is possible at b whereas we have made it impossible in the kinematically determinate structure so theta b is one of the degree of kinematic indeterminacy same is the case with c at c rotation of the joint c was possible which we have restrained that rotation we have fixed that joint c to restrain that rotation so theta c is possible in the original structure whereas in the kinematically determinate structure theta c is not possible and same is the case with d that's why we have learned kinematic indeterminacy as our prerequisite because determination of kinematic indeterminacy and correct determination of kinematic indeterminacy is the very basic step in stiffness analysis here at support d theta d was possible that is rotation at joint d was possible whereas at this end d we have restrained the rotation by fixing it so in the original structure degree of kinematic indeterminacy was 3 that is theta b theta c and theta d whereas in this structure we have restrained all those degrees of kinematic indeterminacies and obtained a kinematically determinate structure having degree of kinematic indeterminacy equal to 0 right so this is equal this is not equal to this so where lies the difference theta b is possible whereas theta b is impossible let us apply theta b over here let us apply theta b over here and let us check this plus this gives me the final result second thing i am applying theta b i am applying rotation at b by keeping all other supports fixed i am releasing the support restraint i am applying the rotation at b and let us say what happens i am applying this theta b in the portion ab i am applying this theta b in the portion bc this is joint b this is joint a this is joint c and this is joint c so i am applying rotation at b in the portion ab as well as rotation at b in the portion bc both rotations will be equal so i am releasing this because i know theta b is possible and this is fixed so i am releasing this and now i am applying this now there will be a set of forces that is required to cause this rotation there will be some moment at this end there will be some moment at this end some moment at this end some moment at this end and another set of forces at this end and if i add these moments to the fixed end moment if i add these moments to these fixed end moments if i add these moments to these fixed end moments i may get nearer to the analysis because i know end b is hinged which is free to rotate and here in the kinematically determinate structure i have fixed it i have means finished its ro rotation now in this third case i have applied the rotation at b i have allowed the rotation at b and seen what are the various forces to allow the rotation at b i have to apply some forces and those forces what are those forces that are required to cause rotation at b we will find out in this particular lecture that is our aim now all of you must have judged by now that this structure plus this structure will not give me the original result because original structure has got theta c also possible theta d also possible and that is why i need to release 
that is why i need to release in the third case i need to release joint c i need to release joint c because theta c was possible so i need to release joint c like this this is joint c b a and d i need to release joint c by applying by allowing rotation theta c in the portion cb and by allowing rotation theta c in the portion cd now all of us know to cause this rotation there must be a set of forces which needs to be applied at c d b and a and if i add these things with the first two things will it give me the clear result still you should say no still the concept is no because we have taken care of this theta b which is possible we have care, taken care of this theta c which is possible but we have not taken care of this theta d and now in the fourth case i will take care of this theta d that is the rotation possible at joint d i will fix remaining joints and i will apply the rotation theta d now since d is connected only with cd i am my rotation will be only visible in the portion cd there will be some set of forces there will be some set of moments which will be required to cause this theta d and if i add now all the four cases all the four cases are there with you original structure is like this initially we have fixed it we have uh, denied any rotation any displacement but we know that this cannot be the true structure because in our structure these were the possible degrees of kinematic indeterminacy so i am allowing one degree of kinematic indeterminacy each time i have allowed theta b i have allowed theta c and now i have allowed theta d every time i have allowed one degree of kinematic indeterminacy i have released the joint restraint this is restraint structure i have released the joint restraints every time to get the final now i know if i add cases 1 2 3 and 4 i will get the end result of mab mba mbc mcb mdc and mdc mcd and mdc so i will get the original structure by fixing it initially and by allowing by releasing the restraints at joint b at joint c and at joint d gradually each one in step by step so this is what we need to concentrate that if the structure is fixed and if we want to release the restraints what are the forces now all of you must be eager to know what are the forces required to cause the release of these restraints if i release joint b if i allow theta b to happen what is the force required to cause theta b that must be your point of interest so we are going to discuss what are the forces that are required to cause the deflections or when we allow the release of restraints what are the forces we need to apply for release of restraints i hope the idea of stiffness is clear this is how stiffness analysis goes and in our next discussion we will see how exactly if once we release a joint what are the forces that are required to cause that particular release i hope you have understood this thoroughly well Thank you.